Hi, this is Jeffy, and welcome to Applications of Deep Neural Networks with Washington University. In this video, we're going to continue looking at transformers. We're going to see how to implement the encoder of a transformer in Keras for time series learning. We're going to predict sunspots. So now let's look at an example of a transformer actually in action. Now this is just the encoder part of a transformer. We'll use entire transformers in the next module when we get into natural language processing. But here we're going to deal with sunspots and we're going to try to predict the sunspots. We're gonna use sunspot data, which I have the links to the files here. And I have code that will actually pull them across the internet for you. Here you can see the sunspots going all the way back to 1818, the month and the day. So it's daily readings of sunspots. We have the year also in kind of a decimal format where it's 1818 dot and then the decimal becomes the Julian day of the year. So zero to, or one to 365. And this counts all the way up for the sunspots. The warning here, I'll probably remove this, that they added another column onto the sunspots, so you don't need to worry about that. It's not really an error, it's more of a warning. You can see that there is quite a lot of missing information, particularly on some of the older sunspot data. So we strip off the values that have missing data. Then we're going to divide it into training and validation so that we can both train the neural network and then actually test it. So the training data is going to be everything before the year 2000. The validation data is going to be everything after 2000. I tend to assume that I mean, the, the sun has such a lifespan, I can't imagine that 1800s versus 2000s is really all that different. And it's not like the humans are impacting the sun nearly as much as we're impacting planet Earth. There's not too many external factors that would really affect the sun. Whereas Earth, the amount of impact of humans on it before, I mean, in the 1800s versus the 2000s is, is great. But for this, this should be fine. We're going to need to take that data because the data, as you can see here, it's, it's coming in the number of sunspots. Uh, again, there's the missing, missing values. I guess they weren't too interested in sunspots in the early 1800s. But we need to take this sequence of numbers and we need to break them, rather than just one big streaming sequence, we need to break it into 10 number sections. So you, we would take the first 10 here, however many that is, say that was our first sequence, the 35 to 17, and then 12 would become the Y. So the X is the sequence, and then the Y is the very, very next number, which is what you're trying to predict. That's what this two sequences function that I wrote here actually does for it. You pass in your observations, so those are the sunspots, and then the sequence size, so like 10. So that'll take up to the first 10, and then the 11th one is the prediction. Then it slides the window, so then it would be 2 to 11, 3 to 12, and so on and so forth, always trying to predict that last one. And we get the X and the Y values. So we print out the shapes of these data sets that we're creating. You can see this is this first big number, the 55,000 and the 6,000, that's the number of elements and they're the number of sequences. 10 is the sequence size. And then one is the window that we're trying to predict. And here you can see the actual sequences being printed out. Now we implement a transformer encoder. This is going to use similar code to what we saw in the introduction to transformers. We're going to specify the number of heads, the, the head size, so the number of dimensions coming, coming into it, the feed forward dimensions, and then the dropout. 
So you can see as the input comes in, oh, and by the way, these are entirely stackable. So the output is, is similar to, or similar is the same as the input coming in. We pass the input through a layer of normalization so that the ranges stay consistent. That goes into the multi-head attention, which we're specifying the, the head size, the number of heads, and the dropout. We implement the, the dropout as well after it comes out. The residual connection, that's the skip connection. So that's taking the, the X that we built all the way up to plus the input. So the inputs came in here and it skips around and jumps to, to there. That gives it greater predictive power because it's seeing the original form as well as what we built it up through the intention. Then we move through the feed forward part. We normalize it again just to keep these, keep these inputs in consistent ranges. We use a convolution layer that can scan across the sequence coming in as the neural layer that we're dealing with. Then a dropout and another convolution layer is basically how this was set up to both add the attention so that we know which parts of the sunspot sequence we want to pay attention to. And then the, the deep layer, the dense layers, the convolution layers, all dealing with the output from that. This function, I did not write myself. I pulled this from Akira's example on using encoders in time series. So you can certainly have a look at their example as well. It doesn't use sunspots. I use the sunspots because we've used it in other examples in this course. Then we build the model. It has the input layer from Kira's, and then it deals with the number of transformer blocks that we want to have. Like I said, they're completely stackable, and that does stack it. And then we add the dense layers at the very end to take the sunspots, and then ultimately the one dense layer at the end perform the regression where we're trying to count how many we actually have. And then we can build the model and train it. You can see the validation loss does drop up to a certain point, then early stopping kicks in. And we've now basically got the transformer ready to predict the sunspots. Now you can adapt this to financial data. I don't know, figure out when Bitcoin is going to next surge. Obviously, if I had figured that out, I would probably not be teaching this course anymore. Uh, or doing anything other than sitting on a beach somewhere. But this, that shows you the, uh, uh, the, the training, and then we calculate a root mean square, so we're plus or minus 14 sunspots. So not, not super accurate, but not, not too bad by any, any stretch there. Thank you for watching this video, and please subscribe to my channel if you want to keep up to date with all the latest on this course, and give this video a like if it was useful to you. Thank you very much.